Missouri. Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, today's topic is greenhouse gardening, and and uh, Brenda and Jan are going to lead us through their uh, tour of what they've been doing. <laughs> well, take, take it, ladies. Well, the greenhouse has been done. Yes. And uh, all the lettuce and you know the lettuce you saw last time has been harvested. Um, there's a few pieces left that have gone to seed, but yeah. um. That got pulled up, and we decided to put peppers in there. Okay. Because every year when I plant peppers, the first frost comes, and I They're lose done, all my yeah. peppers. They're setting bud, and we and, lose peppers. And we don't get that many peppers. Yeah. So the heat of, even though we leave the doors open, the hope is that the heat of the greenhouse, um, it's clearly made a difference. Because if you look at the size of the plants indoor, oh, yeah. the yeah. same ones we put outdoors, it's, it's a huge difference. So... These are jalapenos. Oh my gosh, look at all the peppers on Yeah, there. and let's see what else we got here. These are the residual lettuces, more jalapenos there. These were late planters. These were her um, bell, bell, peppers. bell peppers. And they've just, I mean, they've set wonderfully. These are sweet banana peppers. Man, um, look at the peppers on those plants. <laughs> <laughs> holy moly. Um, what are these? These these are my holy molies, literally. Well, I'd say holy um, moly. Look at the size of that pepper. Yeah. Now, is that a hot one? That is medium hot, so it's a little um, what's about these, jalapeno. What's these great big ones? Are the same ones? Same ones, yeah. So they will turn, um, that's about the mature size. They will go sort of a dark green, almost black color. And it's like a banana. Yeah, and that's yeah. when I consider them ripe. Wow. Um, this one is Anaheim, so these are these will get quite large. Actually, there are some here that are actually. Are oh quite my goodness! Look at those on the bottom. Look good at size that. already. That's yeah. as long as your hand. Yep, definitely is. Now, is that a hot pepper? Anaheims are really quite mild. So, um, is there any truth to it, Brenda? If you plant that Anaheim close to this hot pepper, will they cross? Cross -pollinate they may cross-pollinate, but it won't change the hotness of the pepper very much. It won't? No. Okay. Um, because, I mean, they, there is always a range. There are hot jalapenos and not-so-hot jalapenos. Some of it is genetic. Some of it is on any given plant. Okay. There's a little variability. It also depends on how stressed plants will make hotter peppers. Okay. okay. And then um, here... Well, it's warm in here. Let's step yeah. outside. Well, <laughs> We're not, we're not done. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, our onions are actually made for us. Uh -huh. Pretty good onions. Normally my onions are, this is the, I'd be happy with an onion this big, but yeah. we've actually had some onions. And then over here we um, are drying our garlic. Oh, yeah, so these wow. were tiny garlics that went in in spring. Yeah, okay. really tiny, so like leftover was, from last year kind of. Yeah. I was yep. surprised we got anything at all. Yeah. If you plant a big clove, you'll get a big head. These were tiny cloves. Yep. So to get anything at all, and we'll we'll find ways to use that in oils and and seasoning. Okay, cool. Man, it's warm in there. Yeah, it's a little those tempting. peppers must like hot weather. Oh, they they love it hot. <laughs> and as fall comes, we'll close the doors and probably keep them happy until um, maybe even December, January. Yeah, we're we're hoping. Yeah. So this is Brenda's garden. <laughs> like what is here. that? So these are calendula, which are edible flowers. Calendula? Calendula, yep. Oh. And they come in these yellow, and there's some orange blooms as well. There's just very variation in the plant. Okay. Um, there are asparagus plants in here, um, but I've also seeded dill, much to Jan's dismay. <laughs> <laughs> um, because... It's just a really good spot for dill. I love dill. And I've also got a couple of horseradish plants and some rhubarb plants around the other on, side. On the back side. So this is sort of our perennial. It's going to be what it is. So these are the rhubarbs. Oh or, yeah. Sorry, this is the horseradish. That is a big plant. And the rhubarb. Um. Well, oh sorry, yeah, you can. Not see very it. happy, but the leaves are turning. Yep. So, yep. and then. That spot there is where the onions used to be. We plucked those out. Jan found more bulbs. I don't know what they're going to do, but we put them in the ground. If nothing else, they'll be green onions. Yeah. They're leeks. Okay. Yeah. And then these areas are leeks. Um, some broccoli and um, kale and lettuce. Yep. Which mm. has done very well yeah. with the uh, with the onions. They kept the way the the moths. Yeah. The the kale that's in the middle of the garlics and leeks or the okay. onions and leeks have not been harassed. I've noticed everywhere I walk. Ladies, there's this milkweed. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you pull that? Um, because it's it's for pollinators. The, we're we're beekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. And the they they're they they're native, and um, there are all sorts of uh, butterflies and bees that right. yep. eat the pollen and the nectar. Yep. So I love milkweed. It's, yeah. So we'll pull it in the middle of a bed sometimes. Yeah. But everywhere else, we just let it let it be. Let it go. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Boy, and your tomatoes are really starting to. Tomatoes are producing. You want to yeah. talk about? I'm, well, I'm stealing your thunder. Where do you want to go next? <laughs> well, might as well. We're right here. Yeah. So okay. this is a. We again. We we are not multi. We plant multi species yes. of everything. We are not monoculture in any way, shape, or form. No. So okay. these I think are pineapples or stripies. We have over there. Um, yeah, we have regular. We have red cherries. We have black cherries. We have very. Um, a variety of cherry tomatoes we have um romas we have romas we have um brandy wine yes um just just i mean mr stripey mr well, yeah well, but that's yeah a few of those um yeah we we skipped the early girl and better boy it's like we want more interesting things right. <laughs> right. so all the little plants in the center are yeah the peppers we put some in and some out as you can tell the ones inside are much bigger they produce a lot more fruit they're just so much further ahead. Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is this is one of the bananas. And we this... planted these the same time as we did the inside. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, this is this is her bell peppers here. My and you compare goodness. This to what is growing inside. Oh my goodness. So yeah. So we're trying to do an experiment to see what how well they do out here as opposed to in there. And we we have an answer. So yeah. this is going to help us decide what to do next year. Yeah. yeah. Sure. It looks like you just uh, got five times the production in there yes here. Yes. yes and we have we definitely have more plants out here yeah but, so uh, so brenda what how did we how did we get this how did this bed happen because <laughs> we were going to stop the garden here yes yeah so we haven't even talked about the part we were going to do um <laughs> so greg made a deal and we ended up with was it three three loads of composted horse manure big and load just big load and spread it and yep. then greg spread it so it's probably three or four inches yeah of yep. composted horse manure in this bed and one that we haven't gotten to yet um and put up the boards um these are our walkway boards and those ca those came from where uh, your sawmill slabs oh. yeah so that's your that's your waste <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. You and mean. then uh, we came in, and all that shipping paper we all get from our all the stuff we order, mm -hmm. we yes. we laid it down, and then we had some old saw uh, bales and that. We I don't down. see any weeds out here. Yeah, well, it's, well we like just said, got we've through. got we've got paper down. And we okay. got cardboard and. Yeah. So just laying the paper and the cardboard down, followed by the hay and the mulch on top. Yep. Well, it really whipped it, hadn't it? Yeah. Right. And if it had been a dry year, it would help retain moisture it is retaining moisture to the point where it's Some a little too a little much wet. yeah yeah but uh very unusual year mm -hmm. and and so you know, we're very fortunate we have some of your fiberglass bits and we put them on the ends to help hold up the wood mm -hmm. so that was something brenda we wanted to talk about with the people who do not have sawmill wood mm -hmm. do not have fiberglass bits don't have so what can we do if we don't have all this stuff um, you can get wood stakes, which won't last quite as long. Um, if you're taking down a tree, you can use um, long limbs. Um, and some of it is just, just looking at... Recycling. Recycling, yeah. Just look for, for, um, look for functionality. Even if, I mean, pine won't... Pine will last a few years. Tree limbs will last a year or two. Um, if you've got plants, um, Joe Pie Weed is... I like it because it feeds the birds and the bees, um, but it has hollow plants. The insects like it, but it is a big, very structured plant. So you can right. grow beans and things up it. So use use what you have. Yeah. And then, you know, if you don't have a bale of hay in your backyard, mm -hmm. you can use... I use shredded newspaper. Um, shredded paper from the office comes home, and that, that gets mixed in the compost or just put on the ground. Newspapers. Um, I've got a friend who does a fair amount of woodwork, so I just use sawdust. So sawdust is okay on top, but you don't want to incorporate it into the soil because that will bind up the nitrogen. But on pads, I use all of the sawdust on my pads. Here, you happen to have access to wood chippers, so if you know somebody in the neighborhood who's got a chip, uh, tree coming down, contact the chippers and ask them to dump it on your driveway. What about the fall? Ah, leaves. So everybody else bags their leaves and put them at the corner. I drive around my neighborhood and put those <laughs> bags in the back of my truck and take them home. Um, so I use, I don't have hay at my house, but I have leaves. And people who mow the leaves or chip the leaves, that is phenomenal for, I mean, I have this kind of thing with leaves in my backyard. Yeah. But yeah, because we wanted to let people know that just because we're, that there are ways that they can do stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So yeah. anyway, this is a brand new bed. Uh, this is the first year. Yeah, yeah. So you want to just cut through here, Greg? Okay. I'm going to come around so I don't okay. compress your garden. <laughs> so, oh my God. So, so those are cucumbers. On the end. On the end. And if you look, Greg, there's getting to be little tiny cucumbers. Oh, pickles are coming pretty soon. Well, yeah. So there Jane, are, you have to make some pickles. I already have. You're going to have to make more. Uh, yes. Brenda, do you like pickles? Yes, I love pickles. Well, there was one right over here. <laughs> I know, but then you retrain the vines. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they're, they're already, they're like that big. Yeah. My goodness. So some of these are, um, some of these are the burpless pickles. Here's one. Actually, come around this side and look straight in here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yep. So some of these are burpless and some of them are just the veggie cucumbers. The burpless, um, those are the ones you just eat like a carrot. Ones. Yeah, yeah, so they can get about 12 to 18 inches. Very long. mild. Yes. Yes. So so the one thing Greg asked is we grow cantaloupe. So <laughs> this is Greg's cantaloupe uh, well, section. I love cantaloupe, ladies. I know. And they're the... Oh, uh, man, look at them. They're go. the Athenas. They are Athenas, okay. Yes. And Athenas and some ambrosia. Mm -hmm. And then on this Man. side are acorns and butternut squash. Um, we've got basil plants in the middle, and some of them are being... Whoops, I put my... What's you... <laughs> I'm good. Okay. I'm back. Okay. I had it on me. It was actually looking at my oh. face. Oh, no. Well, good. Well, you you those of y'all watching this, you more. just got, a fa got my face <laughs> in this. And then, my um, goodness, look at that plant. And these are Jan wanted... Um, yellow squash. Oh yeah, look at them, boy. So they're they're really starting to here. come now. Yep. Wow. We got some zucchini on um, the other side. Almost all these plants have a little bee inside of them pollinating you know, for us. You can just tell, ladies, by looking at those plants, they're healthy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those were happy horses. What do you got hanging from that vine over there? So or? these are squash. So there's one type here, one type here, and one type here. So we've got. Um, I forget what they are. Um, but here's some. And there's more the other around the corner. Look at this one, Brenda. What's yep, that? Yep, that one. My goodness. That's a squash or a pumpkin? Uh, that's a squash. That's a squash. Yeah, Dang. and then there's another one in there. So I think these are the Cinderella's. Okay, that's, that one's kind of yellowish. Yep, yeah, and, and the then Cinderella's. there's one here. So they go from green to yellow to orange, and there's another which is changing. And those are squash. Those are, yeah, the Cinderella squash. And these are all things. Can you make a eat? pie out of those like oh, you can oh, pie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, they're really, really oh, Here's tasty. another one. Yep. And then more little green ones back inside. Oh man, those things are just cranking. Yeah. But, but while we're here, Greg, just focus in on a flower. Mm, look at this. The bees have, well, it's maybe getting too hot, but the bees. No, there's a bee in there now. There's three, three of them. them. And they're honey just, bees. It's just partying. Well, one's a honeybee and the others are, I don't know what the other ones are. But look down here on but this one. Native bees. Oh yeah, there's bees all over. Yeah. There's it, even, was, it was humming. Ladies, there's even sweat bees going in there. Yeah. Well, when we first got here this morning, seven-ish, this area hummed. Yeah, the, really? the bumbles. Was, everybody was here. It was amazing. Wow. Well, you're feeding them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and these are these are the cherry tomatoes. These are the um. Oh, we'll show them what, the, what are these? Yeah. They got a funny looking stripe. Those are yours, Brenda. That yeah. Um, does it say? Um, those are the black cherries. These are uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's um. I, I mean, it starts with a V. Virziano? Zebra? No, Virziano or something. <laughs> it's it's a really meaty cherry, and they're they're beefy, and which is why I like them. And these, Golly. yes, these are the black yeah. cherries here. I just can go another day or two. Yeah, yeah. you pick some more here, and yeah, you all were you all were kind enough to let me eat one. Yep. And it was really really good. Yeah, and it's early yet, but we actually have a pretty good harvest. This is pathway you all have made here. This is all out of wood chips. Yes. Uh, cardboard underneath and then wood chips. Okay, so you put cardboard first. We we are, we we believe in feeding the soil. Yes. yes. Wow, look at the bounty here. Yeah, so these are these are the black cherries. These are just regular. Now what? These are those you just uh, you can just eat those just like that. Yeah, just pop them. Absolutely. And then regular cherries. Um, I don't know which ones these are. I don't remember. These are clearly romas. And these are the uh, pineapple, Mr. Stripey. Yeah. God, this is one of my favorite tomatoes. Yeah. Wow. They 
they're beautiful mm. with the rain. They're starting to crack, but these are yep. quite edible. Yep. Um, a couple we of yellow squash. They're a little early, but in a couple of days they won't be. That's yeah. the best. That's perfect eating. Yeah. Perfect yep. eating right there. Yep. Then we picked some more of these today because they're the white onion. They're there. flopping. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. And then this was sort of the end of some red lettuce. Um, it's a little bitter, but it makes really good wilted salad. Okay. And, and we've started these from seeds. Yep. And then this is celery. Again, I started these from seed. Wow. Um, They're looking good. Jan's broccoli from seed. And these are a few leeks and um, leek scapes. Yeah. Leek scapes. Yep. So, Man. Yeah, so I take the leek scapes, puree them. Yeah, you do yours differently. I put them in the food processor, yeah. puree them with a little bit of olive oil and some sunflower seeds. Okay. And then mix that with pasta and veg for a... Uh... And so I cut mine up in little bits and saute it in butter and freeze it and then pull it out and put it in things with uh, whatever. Oh, there, you want to show what... Yeah, what, yeah, what, 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 have, what have you all got in this bucket here? Oh. Uh, well, you tell it, we didn't pick them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Ben and Isaac and I were out in the woods this morning moving cows and... We came up on these, and last year it was in the same exact spot, and a little our chanterelles. Did mm -hmm. I pronounce that right? Yes, mm -hmm. chanterelles. And um, we got about a, a little over half of a bucket. And the boys have already taken theirs out, and so Brenda gets to go home with some, and yeah. Jan and I get yeah. some. <laughs> so this morning we oh, just yeah. created this bed. Yeah. So yeah, this, I was looking at that. What is this? This is going to be our uh, perennial herb bed. We're gonna so. get the basil out of the squash. Yeah, thing. and put more squash in there, yes. or at least expand. But okay. yeah, so we'll put um, rosemary, uh, rosemary, thyme, oregano, marjoram, um, basil, parsley. Basil. I'd like to do some fennel next year. So, so it's kind of kinda right here in the dead center of your garden. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Cool. So it's a good spot. Yeah. And then we have this. Oh, that's right. We had this. Yeah. What's... So this was where the garden was going to stop. Right here. Yeah. Or this this was going to be the garden. Or maybe. The herb, too, but that was all we were going to do. Well, you ladies got carried away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so this was garlic, and that's been harvested. We've got a few beans coming in. Um, they were old seed. We need to replant that. But and we'll get something's been in there ch playing, yeah. chewing it up. These are volunteers. I have no idea. You seem to think they're, they're pumpkin. pumpkins. Yeah, cool. they look like pumpkin. Yep. Yep. So we'll get some of those. But, um, we yeah, just got peas. pole beans. Yeah, so we had... This was all peas? We'd had snow peas here, okay. and this is now pole beans. Okay. Um, so they're going to climb up that pole. Well, you exactly. got one already doing it. Yeah, this is a runner bean, which oh. I like because of the blooms. Um, yeah. Hummingbirds love those blooms. Okay. Um, these are my bush beans. And they've oh. set lots of buds and a few little teeny beans. Yeah. So those are coming along nice. You know, that leaf almost looks like sweet potato. You know, like yeah. Like a sweet potato leaf. Yeah. Oh, could you eat that, Brenda? Uh, I don't know. I have never tried. I wait for the real beans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, me too. I'm a bean eater. And then along this one, we planted um, sunflowers, tomatoes, um, some peppers, some peppers. The peppers aren't doing quite as well. And things ate ate them. Yeah, and they flopped over. So they a little bit of neglect on the peppers. But see, so you got your first sunflower yeah. blossom yes. coming out. Yep. So cool. Again, feeding the birds and the bees. With but the, uh, but we've rethought this garden. This bed completely. We're going to yeah. um, do like we did down there. Just make we're going to pull this all back when we're done, and just make it. We walk around the edges of this and be yeah. more and productive. Maybe use some walking planks because we don't really need two foot paths. Right. And we can actually get a lot more yeah. food in here. We got yeah. three walking paths. Yeah. yeah. And that's. I mean, we can easily make it two boards and and put a lot more stuff in. And this mm -hmm. is this is now. Dog proof. Up. Dog proof yep. and, and hopefully rabbit proof because the beans have gotten big. If, yep. if if the rabbits had access, these beans would not be here. They, they would be chewing them down. Yeah. yeah. And then as we leave the garden. Ah, yeah, what yes. do you got over here? So this is kind of a um, perennial flowers. So this is liatris. Again, the bees were all over this. In fact, there's a bumbler right there on that one. Oh, yeah. On the white one. Um, Jan put some daffodil bulbs in here, some grape hyacinth bulbs, and we're going to put some milkweed in here, so it will be a perennial um, herb bed. And okay. and, perennial and pollinator Yeah, friendly. pollinator zone. So oh, it's man. kind of weedy right now. We haven't gotten to... Um, this has not been our biggest priority. Yeah. 
and right now. Rain, we have well, it looks like those flowers are taking the weeds just fine. Yeah. yeah. They're competing anyway. They're trying. Yep. What are they called again? Liatris. Liatris, that's or, right. Uh, one of the types of blazing stars. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, ladies, I want to thank you all for taking the time to show me around and uh, interrupted your your uh, routine this morning, but your nope. garden looks fantastic. Nope, we're, uh, we're getting ready. In fact, we'll just sign off and then we'll talk about the swarm boxes. Oh yeah, you, well you can finish up okay. with that. So you, you're actually taking those down now because yeah. you captured. How many swarms did you capture? Five. Five? We had eight swarm boxes, mm -hmm. um, but... So and, those that, that are not educated, wh what is a swarm box? What is that? So um, when bees um propagate themselves the queen will fly off with some chunk some quantity of the bees that are in the hive okay um and they go off and look for a new home and if you put these boxes in the trees hopefully hopefully if, you, if you're lucky um the bees go in there and decide it looks like home and there's a queen and there's a queen in there with them yeah so the queen swarms along with them yep so there's an opening on the front Oh, okay. for them to go in and we've got uh, the wire on there just to um, keep mice. mice out okay but inside oh you got bees no no that, that was, was a roach that was a roach. roach okay inside we've got um black comb okay Yikes. go away um because if you've got black comb that helps attract the bees okay it's it, they see it as well somebody's lived here before and stayed long enough to pull comb as well as some completely empty frames and some um i notice you have them just in the top place. right here that's that's all you need is that one row yeah. across the top and if you because it's enough for the bees bees are looking for a minimum size okay and this is sort of the minimum optimal size because they've just split yeah so if it's so, too small they get claustrophobic and what the bees will do is they can start pulling comb on the bottom of these oh and we have pulled things and it's like it doesn't fit in our one box so we just put another box underneath and let them okay continue so okay. they will they will freeform on that so brenda uh -huh. how come there's two different sizes so um i've been beekeeping for a long time and i've used i use the deeps so these are nine inches okay and um i use 10 10 frame deep hives jan uses eight um frame um mediums mediums or okay shorter supers. yeah so in in the others so they're either mediums or short supers okay and it just depends on what kind of beekeeper you want to be gotcha so i, I now realize lift mine yeah <laughs> these, this is nice because they're smaller they're lighter weight they're easier to manage um i don't regret getting these because it's eight. once you've got tens it's hard to go back to eight yeah but um in some ways, in winter, I like the bees having more space. Okay. So, so there's it's just it's just a different it's a way lot to of think about it. Of thoughts. Yeah. Again, so once you, you catch the swarm in here, how do you get them into your hive? You literally take these out. The bees are on here. Oh, and you just set them in there. And you just drop them into your hive. Okay. And yeah. then you tilt the box over, and, and anybody who's not in there runs out. <laughs> okay. Because if you've got the queen on the frame. The bees will smell the queen's pheromone and will Fo go in. Follow her in there. Yeah, so usually I put the frames in and I just tip the box and I walk away okay. and watch because after a little bit you'll see all the bees literally marching out into the new hive. Into the new hive. You've got the queen as well. Okay. So if you don't see that march in there, you probably didn't get the queen in there. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, she may still be in the box. Okay. Oh, so gone. why are we taking them down today? We are, it is mid July. Um, if you're going to capture a swarm, um, they don't usually swarm in April, but in fact, our first ones were in April. Um, in, uh, I think most of our swarms were in May. Right. Um, and, and some in June. And, and a few in June. So by July, if be, bees may still be swarming for space reasons, but if they don't, if they need to be in their hive long enough to be able to collect nectar and pollen and get enough brood, enough bees, yep. To make it through the winter yep and at this point if you catch a swarm in july or definitely in august you probably don't have the critical mass to make it through winter yeah so you're wasting your time yeah. and the bees time right. yeah i mean yeah. you can feed them but the odds of them surviving not is, good yeah yeah so i thought what was interesting is we made eight boxes over the winter in our she shop mm -hmm. and uh and out of those eight <laughs> we only had two that were in the trees that they liked yeah and 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 that's Again, that's the, the luck thing, yeah. in that the bees find a tree that they like going to, and it's really hard to predict, but once you've got a bee tree, 
just keep putting the box really? back because they, these, they'll come back. Yeah, I'll be darned. They just know that whatever they're looking for, that is an optimal spot. Yeah. So huh. that's cool. The next, so next year we got to find yes six more, more bee trees. Five more, <laughs> six more bee trees. But yeah, I was pleased that we caught five. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you lost all your bees. Yeah, with the winter, um, with the frost in March and the frost in April, um, both, um, I had three hives that had wintered over, and um, basically all of them made it till April, and in April, um, they had so much brood, and they actually had a fair amount of honey, but they didn't have enough bees to keep the brood warm, and they froze. Man. Yeah. So, I ended up harvesting a lot of honey. It is bittersweet. Yeah, because um, they were dead. The bees, yeah, right. right. But but now I've got honey in frames that I am feeding slowly to the bees. Okay, so. cool. So. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, for the the thank bee you. and the swarm and the garden tour. And I'm gonna let you all get back to work because I hate yeah. to uh, interrupt progress. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, uh, thank you all for joining us today, and uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out. And uh, we'll see y'all down the road next time. <laughs>